This episode of HCC 788 brought to you in part by Nonstop Pop. Nonstop Pop. Definitely an actual comic strip, and not just an extensive enterprise's front for a cartoonish supervillain's attempts to take over your world, fools! <laughs> Pardon us? Yes, definitely a comic. everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and this week we are looking at the 1988 Iron Grenadier, but there is something bigger that has happened. This channel has hit 2,000 subscribers! This is a victory for all of us, so I want everyone watching this video, no matter where you are, to stand up and celebrate with me. Let's get everybody moving! Come on, everybody, join in! Two thousand. We push ourselves to the maximum. The champions, the champions. We are the champions. Two thousand. Oh, I am out of shape. To give everyone a perspective on what a milestone this is, this channel started in April of 2014. It took 23 months to get our first 1,000 subscribers. Since then, it has only taken 8 months to get our next 1,000 subscribers. And that's not because of me. I'm not subscribing to myself 2,000 times. It's because of you. Because you watch the videos, you like the videos, you comment on the videos, you share them, you help this channel grow. I am very grateful to all of you. Some of you have been around since the very beginning and you're still here and I really don't know how to thank you enough. Yes, I do, with another free giveaway drawing! That's right, I will be giving away another vintage G.I. Joe toy for free to one of you. There will be a video posted in the middle of next week with details, so watch for that. I would love to see 2,000 people enter to win it. There will be other big announcements in that video, so you do not want to miss it. But for now, we have a review to do. Last week, we looked at the Iron Grenadier Leader, Destro version 2. Well, this week, we are going to look at the basic Iron Grenadier Trooper. So HCC 788 presents Iron Grenadiers. This is the Iron Grenadiers, Destro's elite troopers, and that is Grenadiers plural. Uh, this figure represents a member of an army of Iron Grenadiers rather than an individual personality. This is a good figure for troop building, and a lot of collectors do that. The Iron Grenadiers were first introduced in 1988 and were also available in 1989. They were discontinued for the year 1990. The new Iron Grenadier troop for 1990 was Undertow, Frogman. There were new Iron Grenadier troops for 1989, the Annihilators and Targat. We can't talk about the Iron Grenadiers without talking about Destro. Destro was the founder and the leader of the Iron Grenadiers. We looked at Destro version 2 last week, also introduced in 1988. The Iron Grenadiers did not spring out of nowhere. They evolved from earlier elements in the G.I. Joe universe. Uh, on the file card for Destro version 1, it mentions Mars, which was Destro's arms manufacturing company, Mars standing for Military Armaments Resource System. Destro, through Mars, sold arms to Cobra and worked with Cobra as a special advisor, and Destro even sometimes led Cobra troops into battle. At that point, though, Destro's independent activities were only hinted at. In the meantime, Destro maintained a relationship with the Baroness, who was Cobra's chief intelligence officer, which complicated both of their loyalty to Cobra Commander. In the G.I. Joe 
comic book, we learned of Destro's Scottish origins. His family had a long history of selling weapons. He even had a castle in Scotland guarded by a loyal private army. Those private guards became the Iron Grenadiers. The Iron Grenadiers were the evolution of Mars. Destro now had ambitions for power, and the Iron Grenadiers were his version of Cobra, which would help him fight battles, gain power, and use that power to uh, make more money selling weapons. So the Iron Grenadiers still serve the same purpose as Mars, which is profits for Destro. As an independent player, the Iron Grenadiers are the potential enemy of both G.I. Joe and Cobra. But if Iron Grenadiers were to ally with anyone, Cobra is the more natural ally. Grenadier was originally the name given to a troop that specialized in hurling grenades. Later, however, Grenadiers were troops selected for their size and physical strength. They were the biggest and strongest troops. The packaging for Iron Grenadiers includes the Battle Force 2000 logo, Battle Force 2000 being a sub-team of G.I. Joe. This may seem a little odd, but it looks like uh, Iron Grenadiers originally were going to be set up as a rival for Battle Force 2000, but I don't think they were ever used that way in G.I. Joe media. Let's look at the accessories on the Iron Grenadiers, starting with his primary weapon. Uh, the contents of the cards on which the Iron Grenadier was packaged call this a machine gun. That's all it says about it. Although the card doesn't describe it, this is clearly intended to be a stylized Uzi submachine gun. The Uzi, of course, is an Israeli submachine gun. There were a lot of other G.I. Joe figures that came with Uzis, most notably Snake Eyes, who had a couple different styles of Uzi. Uh, Low Light and Law both came with the same Uzi, the exact same one. And let's not forget about Lobotomax. Actually, let's forget about Lobotomax. Let's look at Iron Grenadier's second weapon, which is his pistol, and that's all the card contents call it, is a pistol. The pistol is molded in red plastic, and it looks like it's supposed to be some kind of laser pistol. It's very blocky in design, and I don't love it, and I don't think Iron Grenadier really needs it. Thanks to Form BX257 for pointing this out, the laser pistol can be connected to the hook on Iron Grenadier's hip, which is made to hold his sword, so it can be holstered that way, and I think that's a really nice bonus. Iron Grenadier's final accessory is his sword, and this sword has a lot of the same stylistic elements as Destro version 2's sword, although Destro's sword is much more ornate than Iron Grenadier's. They are still similar, and both swords can be hung from the hook on the figure's hip and they are in about the same color. The sword can be hung from the hip by this large loop on the sheath, and this is another sword that is permanently affixed in the sheath. It can't be drawn and used as a weapon. Uh, it is more of a ceremonial sword for formal occasions than it is a weapon. The sword does fit in the figure's hand, although it looks really odd that way with that big loop on it. It doesn't look right being used as a weapon. I guess, you, of course, you can pretend that the blade is out and he can sword fight with with it, whatever, but I just think it looks odd, and really, it only fits well on the figure, I think, uh, being hung from the hip. But then, of course, it doesn't affix on there very well. It'll fall off very easily, so this is kind of a problematic accessory for me. It looks nice, but it's really not very functional. These aren't the best accessories in the world. I like the Uzi, but the others are mediocre at best. However, taken all together, they do exactly match all of the Iron Grenadier's colors black, red, and gold. Now let's look at the articulation on Iron Grenadiers. He had the standard articulation for G.I. Joe figures at the time, meaning he could turn his head from left to right and up and down. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow that allowed him to move at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep so he could swivel his arm all the way around. The figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed the figure to move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's look at the sculpted design and color of Iron Grenadiers starting with the head and the head is really interesting. It has a black helmet and the design on this helmet really has some flair. It has a fin on it and it has a really long bill out here in front and of course it's black which is perfect for a troop commanded by Destro. Also on the head it has a very detailed bright red gas mask and the color is a nice contrast 
contrast to the black. Uh, these colors I am really liking for the Iron Grenadiers. The chest is really very simple. It is that basic black. On the front it has a diagonal studded flap across the chest. At first glance that looks like a strap, but upon closer inspection it looks like that is uh, a gold studded um, flap over his shirt. And it looks like he has body armor underneath. He has a red and gold shoulder guard on his left shoulder. His arms have some ridged detail on the upper arms. He has black gloves and he has some gold gadgetry on his left wrist. The waist is very interesting. It has a red belt that hangs on a diagonal. It has the hook there for the sword and it has a gold belt buckle and this belt buckle looks to me like a dogwood flower. I don't know that this is intended to be a dogwood blossom but it could be. The dogwood flower has several different symbolic meanings such as durability and reliability, strength and resilience, or religious purity. His legs continue the basic black uniform. They have these red crisscross straps which appear to just be for looks. It doesn't look like they do anything. On his left leg he has a gold pouch with some detail. Not bad. He has red knee pads but they're not the cool knee pads that extend above the knee like on the Cobra Soldier. He has some red details on his black boots and some pretty cool looking black boots. Since this Iron Grenadiers trooper is the basic Iron Grenadiers trooper, he is Destro's answer to the traditional Cobra Soldier. However, this uniform reminds me more of the Crimson Guard. It has elements that look more formal. It almost looks more like a dress uniform than a battle uniform. Let's look at the Iron Grenadiers file card. It has his faction as the enemy, not Cobra. That's correct. Uh, it has a portrait of the Iron Grenadiers here, has his code name as Iron Grenadiers, and he is Destro's elite troopers, even though these are Destro's basic troopers. Specialties, terrorism, sales, marketing development, and that's got to make for a very weird resume. This top paragraph says, the Iron Grenadiers are handpicked from Destro's personal bodyguards. They are the spearhead of Destro's incursions into new territory. The Iron Grenadiers acting as agents, provocateurs, saboteurs, or outright terrorists impel an unsuspecting country toward chaos and turmoil, thereby creating new markets for Destro's weapons where none existed before. Their pay is a percentage of gross sales. This bottom paragraph has a quote which says, Imagine the slickest used car salesman you've ever met. Now imagine that he's also the trickiest accountant in the world. Got that? Try to picture what he would be like if that same guy was also a highly trained commando with expertise in explosives, small arms, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Top it off with the fact that no other mercenary group in the world wants them because of their history of turning on their superiors. That's what an Iron Grenadier is. This file card is distilled cynicism. It places self-interest and profit over all else. The Iron Grenadier made no appearances in the Sunbow or Deke animated series. They did appear in the Spy Troops movie, but this channel is focused on G.I. Joe from 1982 to 1994. So as far as I can discover, the Iron Grenadier did not appear in animated form in the vintage era. They did appear in the G.I. Joe comic book. They first appeared in issue number 69, when one of Destro's loyal troops, the Sergeant Major, first donned the Iron Grenadier uniform. I especially enjoyed their appearance in Special Missions number 23. They were shown to be real elite soldiers. They were as smart as G.I. Joe and were able to counter the Joe's strategy. Unlike Cobra soldiers, which are often just cannon fodder, the Iron Grenadiers were the equal to G.I. Joe. Looking at this figure overall, the Iron Grenadier is an excellent entry into the G.I. Joe universe. They grew from Destro's branch of the tree. So even though they were new, they were still tied to G.I. Joe's history. And I can appreciate that pedigree, and it's kind of a reward for long-term followers of the brand. It's nice to have another enemy for G.I. Joe to fight. The old G.I. Joe versus Cobra can become a bit formulaic, so adding a third party keeps things interesting. I'd say the same probably about the October Guard. And it's a lot better than later attempts to give G.I. Joe another enemy to fight. For instance, aliens. This is a top tier figure for me. And really, if you give me a figure that is mostly black like this, it's hard for me not to like it. I think that black gives a figure a sense of depth 
that can overcome other flaws, such as missing paint apps or a lack of detail. Of course, not every black figure is great. Ninja Force Snake Eyes, case in point. I think the colors chosen for this figure are ideal for Iron Grenadiers. These are Destro's colors. Even the early Iron Grenadiers vehicles had this color scheme. I think this should have been the standard color scheme for Iron Grenadiers. Unfortunately, later Iron Grenadiers figures got away from this color scheme, and I think that was a mistake. I think like there was a standard Cobra Blue, we should have had a standard Iron Grenadiers Black. The biggest downsides for this figure lie in the accessories, the sword and the laser pistol. I mean, the colors are fine, but the accessories themselves are very mediocre. The upsides, though, the black, the color scheme, the overall design, and the very concept of Iron Grenadiers as this rogue organization that could fight G.I. Joe or it could fight Cobra. That was my review of the 1988 Iron Grenadiers. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do the things that have helped this channel get 2,000 subscribers. That means I need you to like this video on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, share this video, and support the channel on Patreon. Thank you for helping this channel reach 2,000 subscribers. Thank you for being a part of it. Don't forget to check next week for the giveaway announcement video. You do not want to miss that. Trust me, I want to hear from all of you. And, oh my god, there is a special video coming up next week. You don't want to miss that either. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. And remember, until then, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.